Man, there is so much changing in our in our lives right now, isn't there? I mean, just at the the pace of the economy from the couple years, last couple years to now, uh, the difference in restrictions, and we all know terminology as well, COVID-19, where you can and can't wear a mask, do you have the vaccine or do you don't, and just a year ago, none of those things were even a conversation to us, time is filled with swift transition, and, uh, and if you've been in any type of conversation with uh, younger generations today, there's a prevalent phrase that's used uh, that's sharing my truth. I have to tell my truth. Uh, we want to hear what is your truth or what is true to you, your version of things. Uh, but how many of y'all know there can only be one truth? There can only be one truth. So it's not your truth versus my truth, but it's the truth. Amen. And, uh, and this verse came to mind, heaven and earth, Jesus talking, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Right. There's things that used to be safe investments in the stock market that are, that are tanked and don't even exist anymore. There are, there are methods of gaining wealth and trying to pass it on to generations that are old vehicles and they don't work in the current day in which we live. But Jesus said, the things that I have spoken to you, they will last forever. Amen. It's something that we can count on. Amen. The precious word of God. Now, I read in his word where he said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That's a timeless truth, isn't it? Amen. I read in his word where he said, are any among you afflicted? Are you sick? Let them call for the elders. Of the church that they might be anointed with oil in the prayer of faith shall save the sick. His word endures forever. Yes. Amen. I read in his word where he said, if any are gathered in my name, two or three, I'm right there in the midst of them. Yes. Amen. I don't know about you, but I felt the Lord here this morning helping me greatly. Amen. And I've come to the house of the Lord tonight expecting him to do a work in my heart. Amen. I appreciated what Brother Tim said this morning. And the challenge to all of us, he's saying, if you were here this morning, you heard him well. He said, it didn't matter that at one time you had the baptism and, uh, and, and now you're not seeking after, or not walking with the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're on the outside looking in or if you had it yesterday. The point he was making was right here, right now, you need the bapti baptism of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Amen. And that's where we're at again tonight. Amen. Not, not, uh, not saying that this has to be the service that you're refilled with the Holy Ghost or the service that you're filled with the Holy Ghost, but it's a mighty good opportunity. Amen. And if you're not saved, it's a good opportunity to get saved. Amen. If you're cold in your spirit, it's a good opportunity to get revived. Amen. And if you felt the touch of the Lord this morning, right now is a good opportunity to feel the touch of the Lord. Amen. I read in his word where he said that if you had seek him, you would find him. Amen. I read in his word that he said that he was the rewarder of those that diligently sought after him. Amen. And I read in his word where he said, if you'll call unto me, I will answer thee. And I'll show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen. How many of you have been praying for wisdom in your life on how to make decisions, which way to go? Lord, don't let me make a mistake. He said, call unto me and I will show you. Amen. Well, right here is a good opportunity tonight to get help from the Lord. Would you stand with me as we start the service? Amen. If you feel joy in your heart, amen, or hunger in your heart, won't you lift your hands towards heaven? Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you, God, that you are the rewarder of them that diligently seek you. We thank you, God, that you've given us opportunity here tonight to draw up to the table and be fed by the Master. God, I pray that you would have your way in this service, Lord, for the souls that may be watching or may be present that are lost, Heavenly Father. We pray that you would draw them unto the place of salvation. For those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord, you said in your word that they would be filled, and we pray let your word come to pass tonight. God, and for those that are here tonight and seeking, saying, God, I want what you have in store for me. We're asking that you would move. We know, Lord, that the service is crowned by your presence. We ask that you would do it. In Jesus' name. I believe in him, don't you? 
I trust him, don't you? He's proven himself faithful time and time again. Glory to God. What wonderful words. Hallelujah. I believe you are my healer. You hold my every moment and you I would share with the world I would say he holds my every moment he calms my raging sea he walks with me through fire there are people everywhere we turn that are hurting so many of them that we don't even know we find out weeks months years later that they were so so crushed and so broken inside and, and yet the whole time pastor says the best clowns aren't with the circus they're in the church because you just look at the outside, you look at the face and you see what appears to be a perfectly put together social media perfect life, right? But I tell you everywhere we turn, there are people all around us that are hurting, they're broken. Healing isn't just for, for uh, sickness, for infirmity. Healing is for spirit, right? Healing is for mind. There are, there are, there are forms of healing that Jesus brings that only he can bring. Hallelujah. 
you can go to the counselor, you can go to the doctor, you can go to anybody, you can even talk to the pastor. There's only so much the pastor can do, believe it or not. And we've got the best. But you take it to Jesus Christ. He's the healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's all we need. He's all we need. I still remember when I was uh, much younger and I, I just was filled with anxiety. And of course, I went to the doctor and the first thing they did was put me on medicine. And if you're on medicine for anxiety, that's between you and God. It has nothing to do with me. And I'm not, I'm not speaking against medication for anxiety. That's not at all what I'm saying. But I'm saying for me at that time, that's what the doctor prescribed. And I, I still to this day remember the day I reached up into the cabinet to grab those pills. And God simply said to me, am I not enough? You talk about a, a gut punch. Well, yes, you're enough, but I've, I've got to have. But he said, am I not enough? I can tell you, he's all I need. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's all I need. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to his name. Now, can I say that since that day I've not had anxiety? No. Have there been days I've, I've never had a day since that I felt overwhelmed? No. Satan still comes. The enemy's still, still alive and well, unfortunately. But Jesus is greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He holds our every moment. He calms our raging sea. And he's walking with you through the fire. Hallelujah, I believe he's our healer. Let's sing it again. You hold my every moment And you call my agency Lord, you walk with me through fire And you heal all my disease Shine! 
and cry. There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Won't you come for a cleansing to Calvary's time? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power There's a wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now, would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. And would you live daily his praises to see? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. There's power in the blood, power in the blood, and would you more evil of victory win? There's a wonderful power in the blood. There's a wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Hallelujah. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, 
Lord for the blood. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, it's the blood that gives me
that gives me strength from day. about all the years that have passed since he shed his blood on Calvary. It's just as rich and full and free and powerful today as it was way back then. Hallelujah. Whatever you've got need of, I don't know why, but I just keep going back to it soothes my doubts and it calms my fears. You hold my every moment. You walk with me through fire. We live in such a day of anxiety. You turn on the news for five minutes and you're going to end up feeling a little bit anxious unless you've got your sight set above. Hallelujah. On Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. War's over in Israel. He's coming back sooner than we can imagine. Hallelujah. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. And until he comes, I want to be telling others, he's enough. Hallelujah. His blood's still enough. He's still saving. He's still healing, setting free, delivering, comforting. Hallelujah. Because his blood will never lose its power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey the choir is getting ready to sing. Uh, but you may have noticed you can be seated or you can remain standing either way. I'm not Sister Amy. May have not noticed that yet, but I'm not. And, um, but I was thinking as Brother Monty was singing that first song there, and he said, he's all that we need. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, coming up here like this and doing this, this makes me real nervous. But I started thinking back to a time when I was about five or six years old, and my parents had brought me into church service, and I was running a fever that was real high, and they'd give me medicine to try to get it down, and nothing was working. And they said, Pastor, can we pray? And all of a sudden, the church began to pray. And all of a sudden, my fever broke. And then I began to think about a time when I was about 19 years old. And Brother Monty, anxiety was gripping my heart. I was up at Bible school, and I was ready just to quit and throw in the towel. And at about midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, I called Brother Caleb Williams. And he started praying with me there in the middle of the night. And I tell you what, the presence and the Spirit of God came down there in my dorm room. And God broke that the bands and the chains of anxiety. And God set me free. And all of a sudden, I felt a peace in my life. And, and as the song that we're getting ready to sing, it says, is there anybody here that's found him faithful? Is there anybody here that knows he's able? I tell you what, church, there's a lot of needs going on right now. There's a lot of situations and circumstances, but I've come to tell you not that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And though my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Though I may not see and though I may not know how, tonight I'm going to say amen. We may mess up. We may make a few mistakes. But I can promise you one thing, church. This choir is going to worship. And this choir is going to praise God tonight. Because we serve a God that has brought us through time and time and time again. And so I ask you tonight, just get in and worship with us as we sing. valleys in our way but right here in this moment may our streams be renewed as we recall what God has done and how we've seen him move if there's anybody here who's found him faithful anybody here who knows Anybody 
Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. I want to read a verse of scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. What nation, what other group of people has a God that's so close? has a God that we can call upon him, has a God that, that will heal, praise the Lord, has a God that will make a way for us where there doesn't seem to be a way. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. We're going to receive our offering. We just believe in God. I thank God for his spirit and for moving tonight. Praise the Lord. I want us just to, to call on him tonight. I believe God wants to minister. God wants to make a way. God wants to meet needs tonight in this service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for all you've done for us. Lord God, for the provision you've made for every situation that we face. God, I pray your hand upon this service, Lord, and upon the remainder of this service. God, that you would touch hearts, that you would meet needs. Lord God, you know the situations that are here that we're facing as a church, Lord, as individuals, but God, you're well able. God, we believe you tonight. Minister, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. that you would anoint Pastor Tim as he's ministering tonight. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would fall afresh on that congregation. There would be a hunger that would take place. We are in need of you and your presence.
greater now than ever before. For it is high time that we awake out of sleep, Lord. I pray you administer and move in this house tonight. Touch for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, musicians, for your help. Thank you, choir. Praise the Lord. As I looked and saw people marching around the altar while they were singing, say amen. I thought of different individuals knowing what some are facing, shouting amen in the face of the adversary. Some things we know, some things we don't know, but we know that the Lord knows and sees it all, is in control of it all. I thought as I saw Sister, Brother uh, John, Sister Becky, Benedict walking around with their hands raised just a few days ago, about five, six years ago now, where they was at. See them walking around praising God. We thank God for His goodness and grace and His faithfulness. We serve a prayer answering God. We serve a God that's in control. Amen. We trust Him. We believe Him. Now, I'm just going to be very honest and open with you. I'm very excited about these young men down here on the front row. I saw them worshiping the Lord. I like all the young men, but I saw these young, young men that was with their hands raised while they are singing, praising the Lord. Saw those in the altars this morning as our assistant pastor did such a marvelous job in his studies writing a book. Uh, on that topic and that subject. We are excited. I want to be an example and be all that the Lord has for us to be. I'm convinced in this service that God wants to do some things. But the response is not up to him, it's up to you. Have you ever tried to feed somebody that wasn't hungry? We sat down at the table today. The boys wasn't hungry. They was tired. They was more tired than hungry. Trying to feed a hungry kid is no problem. You set it down. You don't have to cut it up. They'll cut it up with their teeth. But if their mind is distracted, if they're singing on a hill far away, if they got their mind on something else, but if you get somebody that's hungry, the Lord began to give me some promises for this service tonight, for these services today. I saw a little bit of that this morning, but not all that the promises of God that I saw come to pass today have made it yet. Matter of fact, we haven't really scratched the surface. Let me tell you what I've seen. I've seen some young people getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. I saw some moms and dads getting turned upside down. I saw some grandpas and grandmas that haven't experienced the touch of Pentecost in years get rebaptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, anybody that wanted to stay home tonight could have stayed home. But you're here. If you was here this morning, you know that it's Pentecost Sunday. Now, listen, we've had enough church. Services where we came in and walked out. We said, man, that was good singing, or man, didn't he get animated tonight? What we need is an old-fashioned, heaven-sent, Holy Ghost, Pentecost to fall afresh upon us again. So that when we leave this place, leave this place tonight, these young men will be able to look back and you, they'll say, you remember that service on Pentecost Sunday when we had to carry mama home? I remember, I remember a six-week revival as a kid, Brother Steve. My mama had been seeking the Holy Ghost. 
Brother James, she went down that night. She had went down several times to seek after the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She went down that night, and God gloriously filled her. She swayed all over the place. She got to shouting and hollering out loud like I had never heard her do before. But I remember carrying her out and setting her in the pickup. My dad setting her between me. My sister sat by the door. I was sitting there trying to hold her up. She was falling over on the gear shift. Dad was a crying, trying to drive home. We got Mimo home, and he carried her in the house and laid her down in the bed, and she is still crying and speaking in tongues. I thought, Mama's gone, Mama's gone. Can I tell you? I never seen her. I'm just going to go ahead. She's probably watching. I, she used to have a, she, she'll go ahead and tell She used to have trouble with her temper. But after that night, God replaced that temper. Something else, there was another spirit that came in. Oh, hallelujah. I wish somebody had helped me in here. I said there was another spirit that came. There was things that changed in our home that night when mom got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, I believe God wants to baptize us tonight, Sister Hammett, afresh and anew. We like to wait out there about ankle deep and bend over and splosh a little bit. Of, I, I'm ready for somebody to dive off in the deep end tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel like just calling some people out. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Brother Raphael. God wants to turn you upside down tonight, brother. Hallelujah. He's going to do something in you tonight, buddy, you ain't never experienced before. It's fell on your bride, but tonight it's going to fall on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Brother Austin, you got just a little bit of it this morning, but I believe there's going to be some more tonight. Hallelujah. It's even going to fall on your grandma. Praise God. How long has it been since you's under the spout where the glory come out? Glory to God. Is anybody hungry? Is it blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I, I'm believing the Lord to do it again. Hallelujah, Chloe. God's going to do something for you tonight in this altar. I was praying. I saw you. I saw you getting a touch from glory. You don't have to wait till we go to Camp Penile to meet God face to face. He wants to meet you right now in a Pentecostal service. Brother Dima Chinobi, I'm telling you, the God of heaven is going to do something for us tonight in this altar. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4. I want to preach on being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4. If you'd stand with us for the reading of the Word of God. Acts chapter 4. And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, talking about uh, Peter and John, and put them in a hold until the next day. For it was now eventide, howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, By what power or by what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done, of the impotent man. Hold on, can't see. Got to quit crying so I can see. Hallelujah. What to do with my hanky? Did y'all boys see it? Oh, it's in my pocket.
by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught you, of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. I'd like to preach to you tonight on filled with the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray tonight, Lord, that you'd help us. I pray, Lord, that you'd minister. I pray you'd strengthen. I pray you'd anoint the ears. Arrest every heart and every mind right now. It's a serious moment that we're living in. Lord, and we're believing you and we're looking to you tonight. We're asking you for a divine visitation. We're asking you that the presence of the Godhead would slip down into this room and the power of the Holy Ghost would minister and move and captivate every heart in life and center it upon that which you desire to do. I pray that when we leave this house on this Sunday night that we would not leave the same way that we came in, but we would leave anointed, touched by the mighty hand of God, walking in the presence and the unction of the Holy One. I pray, Lord, that we would breathe of celestial air and, God, that every fear, every anxiety, every stress, every oppression of the enemy would be destroyed. I'm believing you tonight to raise up a mighty army, powerful and strong, in this city, in this area, in this church, for the glory of God. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said... Before you see it, stretch your hand this way if you wouldn't pray for me. I've uh, felt uh, just just had some thing. I know I know it's just the enemy fighting. He don't want he don't want to happen. What's going to take place here tonight? Pray for me right now, Father. I pray you'd touch these lips of clay. God, I pray you'd touch my my body. Lord, give strength and help. Give healing, give clarity of thought and mind that I'd only preach that which you'd have me to preach. God, I pray that you'd stir. The plot of the enemy would be destroyed. That you'd quicken. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Thank you. I'm feeling better. In our text, this is a story of a coward. This is a story about a man called Peter that was once running a backslid preacher, backslid follower, a disciple, but now he's turned into a hero. He went from a cussing, terrible fisherman, terrified and scared. You talk about taking anxiety medicine. This man is now turned into a powerful preacher of the gospel. In the first act of his life, it, see, it all started one night when things didn't go the way he thought they was going to go. Oh, somebody ought to help me now. Things in his life, he had plans of how the kingdom was going to come together. He had plans how he was going to sit on one side and John was going to sit on the other. He had plans how Jesus was going to set up his kingdom here on earth and now his plans has utterly been destroyed. It was the night when a sharp coldness pierced the early spring night and most of Jerusalem was sleeping. They was ignorant of the fact that history's greatest drama was unfolding within the city limits. For only an hour earlier, a little after midnight, the temple militia police had crossed the Kidron Valley on the eastern edge of the city and entered into the tiny garden where he, along with Jesus, had been praying. Jesus had come back and woke him up and said, couldn't you go ahead and pray with me? Because there's times coming, you're going to need to pray, Peter. And he didn't understand it, but now here he is, and Jesus has been hand-tied, carried off. And there at the foot on the Mount of Olives, they arrested his best friend. They arrested the healer, the miracle worker, the man called Jesus. Come to find out, one in his own group, Judas, he was kind of a strange fella, always holding the money bag. And he's the one of the followers that turned him in. 
But all the rest of them had run and fled. They had fled like the morning mist when the penetrating sun comes up. And all of a sudden, Jesus is all by himself. His hands have been tied, and like a lamb, he's been led to the slaughter. And there he stands in trial before Caiaphas, the high priest, and the religious leaders of the nation of that day. And to the followers of Jesus, this painful terror was excruciating because they was in a time when they didn't know. There's many times in our life when we don't know and we don't understand and God's plans don't seem to make sense. And the death penalty was a sure thing for this man called Jesus. And only, all of a sudden, he comes in and he slips up. And, and, and he, if you were looking, you'd see a man slipping on the outskirts. And he slips over to the gate of Caiaphas. And no doubt there's fear in his heart because he's never been this close to Caiaphas. And all of a sudden, man, what am I going to do if they catch me over here? And, and I, as he looks in the shadows, he slips up. And here he is, this Galilean, this fisherman called Peter. And what had happened, his world had been turned upside down. He remembered no doubt only a few days ago when they rode into the city and there was them same people shouting and proclaiming that Jesus the Messiah had come. They're laying their garments, they're waving, they're shouting Hosanna. But now the militia had barged into their prayer meeting and taken him captive. Here's Peter, he finds himself shivering. He don't know if it's from the cold temperature or from the anxiety of his soul. He looks over and he sees a fire and he all of a sudden slips over there to warm himself by the fire. Little did he know that somebody had seen him with Jesus and a little maiden points him out and says, I can tell by your speech. I wonder if he said, man, this fire feels good. I don't know what he said, but she said, by your speech, you sound like one of them Galileans. I think I saw you with Jesus. All of a sudden, Peter said, no, no, not me. And all of a sudden, this little woman wouldn't keep her mouth shut. Oh, help me now. And she said it again. Oh, you been, you're the one of them. I know it. No, no, no. And she said it again. And the third time, this little maiden, we don't know anything about her, but when she said it the third time, the Bible said that he cursed and said, I never knew him. And all of a sudden, a rooster preached a Pentecostal message on repentance. And when the rooster crowed, Peter went out and he wept. I'm preaching to you on filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching to somebody in here that's had faults and had failures and you don't believe that God can do anything for you. I'm talking to you about somebody who walked and saw the miraculous hand of the great Messiah himself and yet turned and went the other way. And here he was and he cursed and said, I don't know the man. And he goes out and weeps bitterly. They take his best friend and they crucify him. No doubt for those three days, Peter is in such anxiety of his soul. Here he said, Lord, he had pulled out a sword. I'll never leave you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, Peter, you don't fight with a sword. You don't do it that way. He didn't understand a lot of things. I'm preaching to somebody right now, don't understand. And you feel like things are falling apart. But the Bible said when Jesus arose that Mary and Martha run to the tomb and the Bible tells us that Jesus said, I want you to go back and tell my disciples and Peter. I want you to go tell Peter why. Because God had some plans for Peter. He's going to preach at Pentecost. Oh, glory to God. The Bible said the Romans took him. They had crucified him. And here he is. He is seen of many. And he says, I want thee. Jesus descends. And he said, Terry and Jerusalem. Pente. There's three major feasts. There's the Passover feast. There's the Feast of Tabernacles. And there's the Feast of Pentecost. What is the Feast of Pentecost? What is Pentecost? Pentecost was the Feast of Harvest. Oh, it is a year of the harvest. I wish somebody would help me in here tonight. I said it's a year of the harvest. But it was at the Feast of Pentecost where the harvest was going to take place.
harvest. They're in the upper room and they're praying and seeking the Lord. There's just 120 of them. And what happens? Holy Ghost fell. The wind began to blow. They go to the western wall and they pray and they stick their prayers inside that wall because they believe that the Ark of the Covenant is on the other side. The reason why they go, because the Jews still to this day go to that wall and pray because they believe that the presence of God rests. I've been there. I've been there. I've seen them. I've been to the wall. I prayed to God. I wasn't praying to a symbol. Help me now. Oh, why? Why was the Ark of the Covenant so important? Because the Ark of the Covenant is what led the way. When they went to battle, if you was a priest, if they went to the Jordan at flood stage, the priest soon as their feet touched the swollen Jordan. What was it? Was it the priest's feet? No, it was what they was carrying. They was carrying the divine presence of God. There was three things that went inside the Ark of the Covenant. It was the golden pot of manna. It was Aaron's rod that budded. And it was the Ten Commandments. Listen to me, Fred. What was it? Inside? What was it? Ten Commandments, the law. You got to keep the law if you want the presence of God. You want the Holy Ghost? You got to keep the Word of God. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. If you don't follow the Word of God, you don't have the same Holy Ghost I got. Help me. What was Aaron's rod? That says, God is my defense. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. I don't need to defend myself. God is my defender. He said, I want you to keep that in the Ark of the Covenant. What was the pot of manna? It was a sign of miraculous provision that if God ever provided for me once, he'll provide for me again, hallelujah. And he said, I want you to forever keep that inside the Ark of the Covenant. But what was it that set over that in the darkness, in the nighttime? It was the fire of God. It was an eternal fire in the night, hallelujah. What happened in the book of Acts chapter two? Where is the Ark of the Covenant at right now? Where's the Ark of the Covenant right now? Where is the Ark of the Behind the wall, behind the veil. Let me tell you, I know where the Ark of the Covenant is. In the book of Acts chapter 2, the Bible said, and clove and tongues of fire fell on it. Anybody in here filled with the Holy Ghost? Can I see you? There go. There's the Ark of the Covenant. There's the Ark of the Covenant. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that fire fell upon you. Hallelujah. The presence of God goes with you. The Ark of the Covenant it goes with you. The fire of God fell on each of them. Glory, y'all ain't helping me. Peter steps out and he preaches because they're asking, what meaneth this? What is it? Pentecost? What's Pentecost? Feast of Harvest? Peter steps out and preaches, and how many saved? 3,000. We're talking about a harvest. Brother, when we going to have revival? You're looking for somebody to come in a suitcase. You're looking for somebody to come and stand and have some series of services. I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost to fall. When the Holy Ghost falls on the church, we'll have revival. When the Holy Ghost moves in to our family, we'll have revival. When the Spirit of God moves in and takes over, revival will take place. And all of a sudden, Peter stands up and he preaches. And the Bible said that 3,000 were saved and added to the church. Glory! Woo! It's coming. Get ready. Peter. Cussing fishermen, running, 
hiding, denying that now he's filled. He's standing and he's preaching. Acts chapter 2, now Acts chapter 3 and Acts chapter 4. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And Peter and John's on their way to church to pray in the third hour of the day. And there's a lame man sits by the road begging. Alms, alms, alms for the poor. Peter said, Mister, I don't have any money, but I'll tell you what I do have. I'll tell you what I do have, and I'll give it to you. Let me ask you a question. What do you have to offer? What does the church have to offer? Yeah. What, what does the church have to offer? Oh, we have pretty buildings, but so does the fancy food restaurants. We have a program, but so does the high school band. We have good music, but so does the club down the street. Oh, we serve suppers, but so does McDonald's. But do we have something that's going to change the life of an individual from the temporal to the eternal? Do we have something that's going to resurrect them and the newness of life? What are we offering? Y'all ain't going to help me, but I'm going to go ahead and preach it to you. Friend, we're living in a critical hour and a critical moment right now. We can't afford just to have nominal Royal Rangers. We can't, have, we can't just go through the services and have just normal Sunday services and just normal Wednesday and normal youth group. We need the power of the Holy Ghost in a greater way than ever before. God, would you fill us again with your power? What can you give me that will help is the question that the world is asking the church. Almost weekly, somebody calls and wants to know what our church has to offer. Anytime I talk to somebody about the church and they say, what do you have? Do you have this? Do you have that? I said, the best thing I can tell you is just come and see. Come and see. And the Bible says, and he looking up, expecting to receive, fastened his eyes on Peter. I believe that Peter grinned. <laughs> Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give up. Well, he's got something. Maybe he got a blowny sandwich or something. I don't know. Peter looked down at him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got something for you. I don't have any silver or gold. Oh, I've had enough tracks. I've had enough invitations. Help me. I've had enough of that. Oh, no. But Peter wasn't finished yet. <laughs> But, sir, I'll give you what I have. And as Peter reached out and grabbed him by the hand, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And before the man could respond, he felt strength hit those ankle bones. And all of a sudden, he jumped to his feet and began to rejoice and began to praise God. And he ran into the church house, magnifying and praising the Lord. I tell you what, it'll turn the world upside down is when we get back to what God has called us to do and when the signs follow the believer it was not the faith of the lame man it was the faith of Peter and John that told him and showed him the healing power of God see here's the problem the church can no longer say silver and gold have I none But neither can we say such as I have, give I thee. The Bible tells us that the man ran into the temple and the people start running from everywhere. (laughs) 
I was preaching in Josh. And while I was preaching there in the deity's hands was all withered up. I'd been fasting and praying and seeking the Lord. I had the ministers, the crowd. The place was packed out. I had the apostolic. I had, a, I, had, I had all kinds of preachers that was there for this prayer and fasting conference. They're all over the place. I'm going one to another. Do you believe God can heal this lady? Do you believe God can heal this lady? Some said yes. Some said I don't know. I didn't have any of them that said no. Some said I don't know. I'll never forget looking on the left side. The Spirit of God pointing out a lady. And I said, you. You in the blue. Got a blue headband on. Come. Come. My interpreter was speaking to her. Come. I seen her bow, hit her knees and jump up. And she run up. She looked at me and said, man of God, I have a boy that's sick at home. And I had to ask God to forgive me because I've doubted whether God could heal him or not. But I know God can heal. So before I come to pray with you that God can heal this girl, I had to get it straight in my heart. So that's why I prayed before I came up here. I looked at her and I said, do you believe God can heal this girl? Her mother had brought her in to that service saying, I'm a single mother, and this is my daughter that helps me work, and she has lost the ability of her hands, and we cannot function, and we cannot make it. She's got to have the use of her hands. I looked at her and said, Nadidi, do you believe that Jesus can heal you? And she said, yes. I said, stretch those hands towards the Lord. She stretched them up and began to open those palms. And those fingers began to pop and the, the crescendo that went through the crowd. As they began to magnify and praise God, folks began to run to the altar wanting prayer. I prayed for a young man that turned and ran straight out the door. Hallelujah. You want to see revival. You want to see revival. Or do you just want to keep going through the motions and getting a paycheck and coming in every once in a while? Or do you want to see a heaven sent revival where you lay hands on somebody in Walmart and before you get out of there, there's four or five people tapping you on the shoulder. Would you pray for me? Listen, I prayed for them in the hospital lobby. I prayed for them in the parking lot. I prayed for them, friend. This is not something that's regulated to the house of God. Peter's on his way to the house of God when the Spirit of God begins to minister to him and he lays hands on the sick man. We think that just these signs shall follow them that believe. It is a promise that has been given to the church. Hear me tonight, friend. God wants to baptize the church with the promise of the Father. Peter being filled with the Holy Ghost. But it angered the political group of the Sadducees. What happened? Look at it. How many was saved the first time Peter preached? Next chapter 2. <laughs> they come running from everywhere. Now how many get saved? 5,000. <laughs> the church has just grown by 8,000 in two chapters. Just because somebody got in the closet. I wish somebody would get stirred up in here. Just because somebody got, got in the closet and waited on the Lord for the promise of, well, I wish the Lord had used me. God's waiting on somebody that will avail themselves. D.L. Moody said the world is yet to see what God can do with one man totally surrendered to him. I believe in that God wants to baptize the church with the power of the Holy Ghost. And the church world don't like it. And so the Sadducees call them in. They have them arrested. Can you imagine praying for a guy to get healed and they arrest him? Throw Peter and John. See, Peter was the oldest. You didn't know that. Peter was the oldest. John was, he was the youngest. 
That's why John outran him going to the tomb. That's one reason why. And that's probably one reason why Peter always had trouble with leather in his mouth. Because he was the oldest and he was always talking. Always felt like he needed to be the leader. But now, see they didn't know it, but something had happened to Peter. And they call him in thinking they can stir him up. Why was they so stirred? Are you ready for this? Why, they, why the church world was so upset, the Sadducees was so upset, is because Jesus came in and turned their political program upside down. Here's what the Sadducees was doing. They was upset because at the Passover, they said, if you're going to come in here, see, you have to bring a lamb. You have to bring an offering. And they said, you can only buy your offerings here. Then the second thing they did is they said you, you have to get temple money. And you have to be exchanged here. And they was charging them outstanding. You talk about ripping them off. And they was, they was, and so that's when Jesus went in and threw up the money changers is because they was ripping the people off. It wasn't that they couldn't, they couldn't get anything. It wasn't, uh, I've had people say, well, you're not, you know, in offerings and things like that. You're not supposed to sell anything. That's not what he was talking about. He was talking about the fact that they was abusing the people that was coming to bring sacrifice by charging them outrageous prices for that. Oh, help me. And they didn't like it because Jesus got away in the way of them making money. And so they're going to call in these guys who said they've seen Jesus and they're turning the world upside down. Who was this? Who, who are we talking about here? Peter. We're talking about a man who couldn't stand 50, about 50 days ago. He couldn't even stand in front of a little maiden. He couldn't even stand up to a little girl who he didn't know. They said, oh, I think you've been with Jesus. No, not me. I'm, but now he's standing before the leaders that have him thrown in the jail. And he don't have to be careful. What happened? Fear is gone. I said fear is gone. Anxiety is gone. Stress is gone. Why? Because he's been baptized. He's been filled with the Holy Ghost. He's been filled and fear is gone. And the spirit of boldness has taken its place. Perfect love casteth out all fear. Oh Lord, fill us. Fill us tonight. Fill us tonight. I don't know who's going to help me. Come help me. Come help me. Get ready. God's fixing to fill some folks tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. Not some fear, but all fear. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Ephesians said, be not drunk. Oh, my goodness. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. Be not drunk with wine. What's he saying? But be filled. Don't be drunk with wine, but be drunk in the Spirit. Be filled. That word filled is a term that is used when they would take a coat and they would dip it in a colored vat. They're going to make it white. And they would take that color and they would stick it down in there and they would prod it and they would twist it and they would turn it until that garment was completely saturated. Until every fiber within that garment was completely covered. And they said, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Oh, we got what they had in Acts chapter 2. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. I'm 
sorry. We don't. Because what they got in Acts chapter 2, when they come out there, they said, what in the world? These men drunk? Woo! You can hear them. Hallelujah. It gave them boldness. down there and pray but I might look stupid I didn't care if their hair was messed up just get me in just get me in the presence hallelujah I'm worried what might happen I'm worried about you don't need to be worried about what might happen what you need to worry about is being filled with the Spirit of God. Peter being full of the Holy Ghost. When I sat there at that hospital this morning early, I was ministering to that family. A 16-year-old man that sat some Sundays right here. Tonight is an eternity. I'm not going to lie to you. I said, Lord, did I do everything I was supposed to do? Was we satisfied just to have church? We, we ain't got time just to have church. We ain't got time just to go through the routine. in the spirit. It's not a time to play games. It's not a time to talk about what we used to have. It's a time to be filled with fresh oil from the throne room of God. My prayer is every young person, it wouldn't bother me tonight if we had about a four or five hour altar service where we had to carry some folks out. If you've ever been around somebody that was under the influence, they don't care who's around. They don't what's going on. They're magnified. They're hollering. I'm telling you, friend, I pray tonight that God would baptize us afresh and anew in the power of the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody hungry? <laughs> Is there anybody hungry? Oh, yeah. Come on. 